Again, you're watching Sky News. MPs are hearing from some of Britain's most senior police officers this afternoon. They're discussing the challenges their forces face and whether they have the funding and resources they need to combat the current terror threat and complex cybercrime. A little earlier, the Chief Constable of West Midlands Police, Dave Thompson, set out the budget pressures for, uh, facing his force. We, in 2015, West Midlands Police had a budget of 524 million. It will have a budget of 524 million in 2020 if the Police Crime Commissioner lifts the precept to the maximum. With inflation at 3%, with changes in terms of the pay settlement coming, with all the other cost pressures we know in services, the answer is that is, that is a real term cut. So the overall police budget may have been protected, but police forces weren't. And I think there is a, a, a good debate to start to ask the question whether the amount of money Home Office has allocated, whether or not actually more of that money should be spent on police forces. Let's bring in Peter Kirkham, should we? A former detective chief inspector with the Met, who joins us now from our central London studio. We've talked often in the past, have we not, Peter, about we the have. challenges facing uh, police forces. What do you want to? What do you? What would you see as a successful outcome from the meetings that are going on today? I would hope that the select committee start to recognise just how serious the crisis in policing is. Uh, I listened to some of the select committee uh, evidence as I was uh, waiting to come on, and senior police officers are pseudo politicians now and they use fairly diplomatic language but reading between the lines there is huge concern being expressed uh, and I just hope that the committee recognize that uh, and that's reflected in their report uh, the bottom line is that with increasing demand and with increasing demands on how things have to be done to higher quality standards and with more uh, forms to fill in and, and more writing for everything um, if you've got a flat cash settlement um, that takes no account of increased uh, inflation or and increased other costs, then you're going to lose police officers. The police service has got 80% of its um, money tied up in people and therefore people go and police staff and PCSOs have gone in large numbers. Uh, it's going to bite deeper into police officers and the public are already noticing them missing from streets and missing from communities. It doesn't help, does it, with that nonsense that we saw in some of the papers over the weekend when police officers are on dodgems and having their nails painted and goodness knows what else. not really helping the cause. OK, that's totally marginal and unfortunately some parts of the media, especially some of the press, uh, have misrepresented that entirely. The officers on the dodgems were after their tour of duty had finished and they were just having a bit of a laugh with the fair staff they'd been working with for a few days. The officers in the bear uh, masks were on a, a primary school visit and a couple of officers at an awareness event for a couple of hours makes no difference when you've lost 21,000 or more police officers and the same again police staff. It, it's, it's, it's a distraction and I sometimes think some parts of the media are deliberately distracting from the things that matter, namely that the streets are being lost, the levels of violence are rising, violent crime is rising, there is a crisis in policing, the government don't want to talk about it, it doesn't fit their crime is down, police reform is working narrative, crime is up and police reform is an unmitigated disaster is the reality. And so we see these stories that are just distracting from the truth. Um, the public need to realise that things like that don't have any significant difference when you're talking about cuts as deep as we've had. The government would say that uh, we need to police differently. Uh, we need to approach uh, the threat differently to what we have done uh, in the past. Yeah, they keep saying stuff like this and they keep saying that we need more from less and all the rest of it. They don't actually suggest how that's going to be done. They talk about, and, and one of the uh, think tanks that they, they have coming up with bright ideas that they can then just in, uh, apply, uh, recently said, well, we no, need more techies, we need more people doing online crime, cyber experts, not police officers. Well, yeah, but we need them as well as police officers. When the cyber experts have decided who's doing all this fraud, they're not going to go out, kick the door in, nick the people and do the interviews and put the file together for the CPS. So it's as well as, not instead of. OK, and it's going to... T if you started uh, replenishing the number of police officers that have been lost today, it still takes time to train them. So presumably what you're suggesting there, Peter, is that there is going to be a period when we are um, critically short of officers. I, I dread to think what the next five to ten years will be like. Um, we're still seeing the cuts working through. 
the Metropolitan Police, for instance, have got another 400 million of cuts to make when they've already made 600 million. You can't take a billion pounds out of the police service in London and expect to see policing delivered as it was before. We have got worse times to come before they get better. There is a crisis in policing. We are not crying wolf. Uh, good to talk to you. Thanks.